you might be taking a medication now that is affecting this vital organ. Walking into a doctor's office to get a script or just grabbing over the counter medications from a pharmacy, you probably thought that it was going to be a lifesaver, only to find out that it could harm your liver. Liver damage is a serious concern, but there are steps you can take to protect your liver health while taking medications. So stick around as we explore common medications that could be affecting your liver and how you can safeguard your health. Drug-induced liver injury, or hepatotoxicity, is a significant cause of liver damage. Drug-induced liver injury is relatively uncommon, but medications, herbal preparations, and supplements are among the underlying factors. Sometimes this damage may be predictable or unpredictable, also termed idiosyncratic, which unfortunately at most times are often unpredictable. Drugs such as paracetamol can cause predictable liver damage in a short time and are usually dose dependent. But medications causing unpredictable liver damage have an average delay of one to two months or long delay period of one year and generally are irrelevant of the dose. The incidence of hepatotoxicity depends on various underlying factors involving the presence of existing liver disease, genetic factors, taking concomitant hepatotoxic drugs, dosage and duration. Liver damage is usually apparent as an elevation in liver enzymes such as aminotransferases or alkaline phosphatase. Liver biopsy is not mandatory for diagnosis but could exclude other causes of liver disease. Now that we have understood the foundation of drug-induced liver injury, let's talk about some common medications that can cause liver damage. The first medication we'll talk about is paracetamol, also known as acetaminophen in the United States. This ubiquitous over-the-counter drug for pain relief is one of the biggest culprit for liver damage when used in excessive amounts or used improperly. When you take paracetamol, your body primarily metabolizes it in the liver. It is further broken down into various substances, one of which is NAPQI. Normally, the liver efficiently processes and detoxifies the substance by combining with a molecule called glutathione to neutralize its toxic effects. The problem arises when you take too much paracetamol or consume it over an extended period of time, which overwhelms the liver's ability to handle NAPQI. When glutathione is depleted due to excessive NAPQI formation, the remaining NAPQI can become highly toxic to liver cells leading to inflammation and cell death. Paracetamol-induced liver damage progresses through stages, starting with liver injury and potentially life-threatening acute liver failure. So what can you do about it? The most important thing is to stick to the recommended dosage. For adults and children over 12 years old, the dose is one gram every four to six hours up to a maximum of four grams per day. For children under 12 years old, it is based on their weight and age, so it's really important that you look at the manufacturer's instructions. If you are taking paracetamol for an extended period of time, the concern for liver damage is more relevant among people who have serious illness, alcohol use disorder, or pre-existing liver issues. It is best to avoid drinking alcohol while taking paracetamol in this case. Another important thing to consider is that a lot of over-the-counter drugs, especially cold and flu products, contain paracetamol. So it is important to check to avoid accidentally taking it from multiple sources and overdosing. If you have accidentally taken too much paracetamol, call emergency as it requires immediate attention. n acetyl sustain is a safe and effective antidote for paracetamol overdose, but timing is crucial to protect the liver from significant toxicity. Early medical intervention can help mitigate the damage and improve the chances of recovery. The second drug on our list today is a class of medication called antifungals. Oral antifungals have been implicated in many cases of hepatotoxicity and serious liver injuries in the last few decades. A real-world study found that about 2.9% of all reported drug-induced liver injuries are associated with antifungal drugs. All antifungals are associated with hepatotoxicity. However, their toxic mechanisms are poorly understood. Some proposed mechanisms are that antifungals are primarily metabolized in the liver, and in the process they may produce toxic byproducts that cause liver damage. Secondly, antifungal drugs can interact with other medications which may affect how the liver processes these drugs and can increase the risk for liver damage. In some cases, liver damage may occur due to idiosyncratic reactions, which are rare and unpredictable adverse effects that are not linked to the drug's standard pharmacological action. 
Not all antifungals carry the same risk of liver damage and the likelihood of adverse effects can vary. Based on the available data, azole fungals such as ketoconazole and fluconazole seem to have the highest relative potential for hepatotoxicity, followed by terbinafine, amphotericin B and the echinocandins. So what can you do about it? If you are taking antifungal drugs for a prolonged period of time, it is best to have a liver function evaluation before treatment and periodic monitoring every few weeks. If you suspect liver damage, discontinue the drug. Generally, patients have a favorable prognosis after discontinuation of the offending drug. The next class of medications are antibiotics. Antibiotics are another common cause of drug-induced liver injury, probably because of the high rate of exposure in the community. Most cases are idiosyncratic and are therefore rare and unpredictable. Some common antibiotics that can cause liver damage include the combination of amoxicillin with clovulanic acid, sulfamethoxazole with trimethoprim, tetracycline, ciprofloxacin, and isoniazid. Specifically, amoxicillin with clovulanic acid has been implicated in hundreds of cases of clinically apparent acute liver injury, and this combination is currently the most common cases of drug-induced liver disease in most large case series from the United States and Europe. Although the cause of hepatotoxicity to amoxicillin and clovulanic acid is unknown, in many cases it appears to be immunoallergic in origin. Being immune-mediated, the onset of injury is typically a few days to as long as 8 weeks, averaging around 3 weeks, after initiation of therapy, and often occurs after the course of antibiotic is completed. Due to its delayed presentation, the association of liver injury with amoxicillin clovulanic acid may be missed. So if you experience fatigue, low-grade fever, nausea, abdominal pain, followed by a rash and jaundice, even after finishing the course of antibiotics, talk to your healthcare provider straight away. The next medication we'll talk about is allopurinol. Allopurinol is a widely used medication for the prevention of gout by lowering serum and tissue uric acid levels. Allopurinol has been linked to a very distinctive form of acute liver injury that is accompanied by prominent immunoallergic side effects such as fever, rash, eosinophilia, thrombocytopenia, arthralgias, and facial edema. Being immune-mediated, the typical latency to onset is two to eight weeks. In some cases, fever and rash arise one to two weeks before evidence of liver injury and rises in serum liver enzymes. While most cases of acute liver injury attributed to allopurinol are self-limited and start to resolve within seven to 10 days of stopping the medication, other cases are longer lasting, severe, and even fatal. So if you develop fever or rash within the first few weeks of starting allopurinol, talk to your healthcare provider straight away. The last drug on our list today is atovastatin. Atovastatin is a cholesterol-lowering drug that belongs to a class of medication called statins, which are among the most frequently prescribed drugs in the world, with more than 50 million prescriptions filled yearly in just America alone. Clinical trials have shown that atovastatin is associated with mild, asymptomatic and usually transient increase in serum aminotransferase in about 1-3% to of patients, but levels above 3 times the upper limit is less than 1%. The elevations appear to be more common with higher doses of atovastatin, being 2.3% with people taking 80 mg daily. Clinically important drug-induced liver injury due to atovastatin is very rare, occurring in about 1 to 3,000 to 1 to 5,000 treated patients. Also, the clinical presentation of liver injury can vary greatly from simple cholestatic jaundice to mixed to hepatocellular injury which has poor prognosis. The latency to onset of injury is also highly variable ranging from one month to several years. However, most cases arise within six months of starting atovastatin or several months after increasing the dose. The cause of liver injury due to atovastatin is unknown. One explanation for the mild self-limited ALT elevation could be due to a toxic intermediate of drug metabolism by the liver. So when starting atovastatin, it is recommended to screen for liver test abnormalities in the beginning of treatment and repeat tests as clinically needed. Mild elevation of ALT is generally self-limited and does not require dose modification. However, if ALT levels rise as above tenfold normal or persist in being above fivefold elevated or associated with symptoms of liver injury, discontinuation of atovastatin is recommended. So that's it for today. Thank you for joining me today to learn about the important topic of drugs that can potentially harm your liver. Your liver is a vital organ and being aware of the medications you're taking is key to safeguarding your health. Remember, it's not about living in fear, but about informed choices. 
always consult with your healthcare provider, follow prescribed dosages, and let them know about any existing liver conditions or other medications you're taking. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with friends and family. Together we can raise awareness about the importance of liver health. See you in the next video. Stay healthy and stay amazing.